Similar to authentic leadership's focus upon the idealised influence and inspirational motivation characteristics of transformational leaders, charismatic leadership gained particular traction in the business media of the 1990s, and it is still widely discussed in these, if not necessarily, academic circles today. Charismatic theories of leadership measure leadership from the follower's perspective of the leader's behaviours. This is in contrast to transformational leadership that examines follower outcomes. As Riggio notes, Charismatic leaders are essentially very skilled communicators, individuals who are both verbally eloquent but also able to communicate to followers on a deep emotional level. They are able to articulate a compelling or captivating vision and are able to arouse strong emotions in followers. As Conga, Kanungo and Menon report, charismatic leaders are different from other leaders because of their ability to imagine and communicate an inspiring vision and through behaviours and actions which generate an impression among followers that what they are offering is extraordinary. As such, people choose to follow such leaders in management settings not simply because of the leader's formal authority, but out of perceptions of their leader's extraordinary character. While even Conga and Kanungo acknowledge that there is little difference between charismatic and transformational leadership, there are some characteristics of charismatic leaders which have received scant attention in the transformational leadership literature. They seem to produce positive effects and outcomes for followers, as well as enhancing the collective identity of followers in organisations. In particular, going against the status quo, sensitivity to the external environment, taking risks and making personal sacrifices for others, and innovative and unconventional means for achieving visions. Though originally coined in 1970 by Robert Greenleaf, servant leadership is a relatively new area of leadership theory and research, which is intimately linked to ethics, virtues and morality. Growing out of the corporate excesses of the 1990s and the failures following the dot-com bubble burst and the global financial crisis, the emphasis of servant leadership is on service to others and to put forward the position that the role of organisations is to develop people who are capable of building better organisations and societies generally. Its origins, however, go right back through human history with people such as Confucius, Lao Tzu, Moses and Jesus Christ as ancient examples of servant leaders and Martin Luther King and Mother Teresa as more contemporary ones. A distinguishing feature of servant leadership is that whereas most modern leadership theories focus upon what the leader does, servant leaders are defined by their character as well as by manifestly demonstrating their complete commitment to serve others. Empirical testing of the servant leadership concept is promising insofar as it has been shown to produce heightened levels of team effectiveness and individual follower well-being. Spears identified ten characteristics of servant leaders from Greenleaf's writings. First, listening automatically responding to any problem by receptively listening to what is said, which allows them to identify the will of the group and help clarify that will. Second, empathy, striving to accept and understand others, never rejecting them, but sometimes refusing to recognise their performance as good enough. Third, healing, recognising that, as human beings, they have the opportunity to make themselves and others whole. Fourth, awareness, strengthened by general awareness and above all self-awareness, which enables them to view systems holistically. Fifth, persuasion, relying primarily on convincement rather than coercion. Sixth, conceptualization, seeking to arouse and nurture the ability to envision greater possibilities for themselves and others. Seventh, foresight, intuitively understanding the lessons from the past, the present realities, and the likely outcome of a decision for the future. Eighth, stewardship, committing first and foremost to serving the needs of others. Ninth, commitment to the growth of people. The leader nurtures the personal, professional and spiritual growth of each individual. And finally, tenth, building community, the leader identifies means of building communities among individuals working within their institutions. It is argued that the servant leader's motivation to lead is born from a desire to serve others better. Its obvious links to transformational and authentic leadership means that despite limited research on this theory to date, it is possible that it can offer further insights into how aspects of the transformational leadership theory can be operationalised by leaders. 
We've come a long way since the 19th century academy studied Julius Caesar or Admiral Horatio Nelson as clear ways to understand and develop leadership. And we've come to understand the vital elements that any leadership theory must explain. In concluding, and as Haslam and his colleagues note, any adequate theory of leadership must include four key elements. Firstly, it must explain why different contexts demand different forms of leadership. Secondly, it must analyse leadership in terms of a dynamic interaction between leaders and followers. Thirdly, it must address the role of power in the leadership process, not simply as an input, but also as an outcome. And finally, it must include a transformational element and explain how and when any such transformation occurs. So the journey we have taken together through leadership theory is replete with twists and turns and with dead ends and returns to familiar paths, since even today elements of trait theory echo through contemporary leadership thinking.